You are familiar with using numbers to count manipulatives. You are also familiar with using numbers as addresses. We will review place representation and then remind ourselves that infinity is not a number. In kindergarten, we were introduced to the idea that numbers mean how many things you have. Do you have nothing? Do you have items 1, 2, and 3? Or, for example, do you have items 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5? We distinguish these conditions using a number line. You are also familiar with the idea that numbers mean at. At. By labeling the center street main street and then numbering blocks in sequence to the north and to the south, we can say that we are at 2 south, the hospital is at 3 north, and the bank is at 4 south. We don't mean that the hospital has three somethings or that the bank has four somethings in hand. We are referring merely to geography. In mathematical work, we often replace Main Street with zero and north with plus, and we say minus or negative instead of saying south. The idea of at is useful beyond the context of literal geography. We are opening a new account at a bank, electronically depositing a cent. Yeah, yeah, another cent. Another cent. And here's one more final cent. If we ask the teller to help us withdraw penny number three, he or she will retort that our request makes no sense. Ah, ha, ha, ha. There is no literal penny number one, two, three, or penny number four in our account. Our account is merely a balance. It would not make sense to request to exchange the so-called the green penny from account A with the so-called the orange penny from account B. Not only does this process have no financial consequence, it has no consequence by virtue of being non-physical. It is not real. In some situations, it is important to describe populations of some atoms and some subatomic particles in the way we have just described account balances. Exchanging the third atom in quantum state A with the second atom in quantum state B doesn't do anything. There is no the third atom in state A. There is no the second atom in state B. This seemingly philosophical subtlety has consequence for calculating the statistical properties of collections of particles. How many ways can we arrange five particles while minimizing total energy? In the at picture, this means how many ways can the populations, occupancies, or balances of states 0, 1, and 2 add up to 5 while minimizing total energy? There is one solution. Use an occupation or balance of 5 in state 0 with no occupation of the remaining states, those being 1 and 2. The total energy is 5 times E0. We obtain the same conclusion using the have picture, where there is also one configuration. Put all five manipulatives in the ground state for the same total energy five times E0. If we try to tickle the system with outside energy, how easily does the system become excited? As a more specific example, how many ways can I push three particles from the ground state into the excited states? In the at picture, we are asking how many ways we can arrange the populations, the balances, or the occupancies of the states so that they still add up to 5, and so that the occupancy of the ground state is now 2. There are four ways. There's the one that's already pictured. This is another one. Here's another one, and here's the fourth. The have picture disagrees. Do we excite particles 1, 3, 5? Do we excite particles 1, 2, 4? Do we excite particles 2, 4, and 5? There are 10 ways we can excite 3 of 5 particles. And then how do we arrange those 3 particles? There are 8 different ways to arrange 3 particles in 2 states. We just said that there are 10 different ways to excite 3 of 5 particles. Multiplying this against the 8 ways to arrange them once they are excited into 2 states, the have picture leads us to conclude that there are 80 ways to remove three particles from the unexcited state into excited states, which contrasts with the four ways calculated from the at picture. In some situations, physicists will use the label Bose-Einstein condensate to refer to a collection of particles that tends to remain unexcited in a way consistent with the at picture, but counterintuitively inconsistent with the have picture. The number line is a tool common to both the have and the at pictures. There are other ways to represent this same idea. We can use a wedge. 
We can also use place representation by accordion folding the straight number line back and forth on itself, introducing a crease every 10 numbers. Uh, for example, the number 24 is represented as two vertical steps, so that would be two tens, and four horizontal steps, that would be four ones. The number 35 is represented as three vertical steps, that's three tens, and five horizontal steps, or five ones. Place representation makes arithmetic efficient. Instead of adding 24 to 35 by taking 24 steps along a straight number line, and then taking an additional 35 individual steps on the same line, we start from 24 on the square grid and take three vertical steps, and then five horizontal steps, to get 59. The grid can be extended using three-dimensional plotting to include a 100s place, but additional places are difficult to plot. Traditionally, the digits corresponding to place representation are not combined in this kind of grid. Instead, they are placed on a row, as on this soroban, or so-called counting tray. The application of memorized rules for performing arithmetic in place representation is called algorithm. We need to finish our review of numbers by reminding ourselves of something that is not a number. The lemniscate is the name of the symbol for infinity. Infinity is not a number. It is an instruction to continue without bound or end. Infinity describes an ongoing process of moving along the number line. Infinity does not identify any single location on the number line. There is no tick mark on the number line called infinity. Infinity is not a number, at least not for this course, I don't do hyperreals here.